the genetics project, the Alzheimer's genome project, multi-million dollar project to identify the remaining Alzheimer's genes. The idea being that 70% of Alzheimer's genetics remains unsolved. The 30% we know about li drives literally all of the research in the world on Alzheimer's and academia and industry alike. Imagine what we could do with the other 70%. So we're trying to discover all of these other genes. And what we're learning is there are dozens of genes involved in Alzheimer's. They're teaching us which pathways matter. So by getting large sets of genes, all with small risk, fa risk factor effects, and asking how they interact with each other, and what are the common biological pathways where they play a role, we can suddenly learn about all these different biochemical aspects and biological events in the brain that matter in Alzheimer's disease that we would have never dreamed of before. And that's the beauty of genetics. It's unbiased. The genetics that just deals you the cards and says, here's what matters. Okay? So of course, the other way to do this is scientists all have their hypotheses and they say, I think, you know, I thought about Alzheimer's disease and I have this hypothesis. I think it must be this gene and that protein that matters. And you know what? Usually they're wrong. Most of the time, when you guess something and you, and you, 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 know, you, you force a gene or protein on a disease and you come up with a great idea in your own head, usually it's wrong. But if you start the other way around and say, in an unbiased manner, I'm going to do the genetic analyses and I'm going to see which genes fall out. I don't know what's going to come out. There are 35,000 genes in our human genome. I don't know which ones are going to matter, but I'm going to do genetics and statistical analysis the best way possible today and let those genes fall as they may. And then you look at them and you say, wow, who would ever thought? I mean, we did say this. We look, we're looking at the genes we got out of this project all the time. There's an Excel file, a spreadsheet with, you know, three or four dozen genes on it. We're like, I probably would have never picked any one of these to be involved in Alzheimer's. That's the way you want to be. Totally surprised by your results. And then you dig in. You say, okay, let's see how these genes might relate to each other. Let's see what biological pathways and events come out of this. And now, suddenly, you have a new biological pathway that's broken. And you can think, I know what kind of drug can fix that. Key values, uh, going through infection. And now you go from the foundational to the translational studies. How do you go for that drug? And then the crossover part of the roadmap, let's get that drug. So, and, so we, the Alzheimer's Genome Project is our flagship. That's our central project that we're really um, uh, focusing on. And one of the big problems is that when you don't have autopsy-confirmed cases, you don't know you're looking at Alzheimer's. Exactly. So it's possible in the GSK study, you know, it says 1,315 combined cases and controls, but some of those cases might not be Alzheimer's. They might be other types of dementia, right? Okay. Frontal lobe dementia or, or PICS. The bottom things. line is that every so. single new gene we discover in the Alzheimer's Genome Project, funded by Cure Alzheimer's Fund, we get an enhanced ability to predict and diagnose the disease, and we get a new biological clue for what causes the disease, and most importantly, a clue for drug discovery. It, it instructs us as to what type of drug or therapy we need to develop.